And w now we can find out what the uh, the axial load is on the stress uh, is on the section. It's going to be P over area transformed equals uh, 3.96 MPa. So the the uh, the P is just going to equal 3.96 MPa times 79,866 millimeters squared. So if we make that kilonewtons, it's going to be uh, 3.96 MPa times 79,866 divided by 1,000. And that's going to be 316.3 kilonewtons. 316.3 kilonewtons. And when we compare it uh, to the table, which for, from the force method comes bang on 316.6 kilonewtons. So we're on the right track with this with this P over A, M Y over I approach. It, it can work. Now the before we can find out what the E is using the MY over I, we need to find out what the inertia of the section is. So the, and I'm going to write it down here, inertia. What we can do is instead of using the inertia about the, uh, about the neutral axis, and incidentally the neutral axis is going to be, we found it now, for this pure stress distribution, the neutral axis is at 150 millimeters, which is here. That's 150. From here to here is 150. And from here to here is what's left over. So we have 150. Sorry, 0.89. And then here to here it's 99.1 uh, millimeters. Now, everything above the neutral axis here is in compression for the pure flexural case, right, and then below it's in tension, as well the steel is in tension here too. This is not the the neutral axis location for here, which is the combined stress. This, I'm drawing the neutral axis location on the pure flexural distribution, which is for this stress distribution. So it's in compression above the neutral axis and it's in tension below. So I'm going to just make it faster. I'm going to find out the neutral axis about this axis first and then use parallel axis theorem to find out the neutral axis here. So if I'm taking uh, inertia about the top, which is here, right, I'll find that I get uh, the uh, 112 times 300 times uh, 250, the whole 250 cubed plus the AD squared component of of this whole rectangle. That's going to be uh, 300 times 250 times 250 over 2 squared plus the area, the transformed area, 4866 times this distance, we're taking neutral axis about the top now, right? That's 550 from here to here. Minus, this is where the parallel axis theorem comes in, minus the, the total area, 79,866, times the distance from this neutral axis to this neutral axis, 150.89. Squared. And then when we uh, calculate all this out and this, I've already calculated it uh, just to save some time. It's uh, 1,216.1 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth. And now that we have that neutral, uh, now that we have that moment of inertia for, for this uh, section here, we can find out from my over i, we know p is solved as 316,300 
newtons times e, which is an unknown, and p times e is the moment, times y, which is the distance from the neutral axis up to the extreme fibers and bending, which is 150.89. So that's 150 over i, and we've calculated it, 1216.1 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4th has to equal this stress here. This stress from here to here is 6.04 MPa. And uh, we can now, and then we can solve for, from this we can solve for E, right? We can take uh, the 1216 times 6.04 divided by 150.89 and divide all that by 316,300 316, and solve for E. So 6.04 times 1216.1 e to the 6 divided by 150.89 times 316,300 gives me an E of 153.9. Now that E is relative to this neutral axis here. So we'll go from here up to uh, somewhere around here is where the uh, the P would be. But we want to find the E relative to the uh, the gross neutral axis which is at 305.8. We're always taking about this. 305.8. So to find out the E prime, I'm just going to write up here, E prime will equal the 153.9 which is here to here, 153.9 minus this distance here, 150.89, and then add back. Uh, that's gonna give us the distance from here to here, from, from here to here, and then we add back the 305. 305.8 to get the uh, the E prime eccentricity, so 153.9 minus 158.9 plus 305.8. So that's 308.81. And then by taking, if we take the P times the E prime, 316.8 three kilonewtons times zero point three oh eight eight one meters we're gonna have the MR prime. So this is gonna be three hundred and sixteen point uh three hundred sixteen point three times point three oh eight eight one meters that gives me ninety seven point six seven kilonewton meters. And so that's the M prime value. M prime is 97.67 kilonewton meters. And I'm just going to go back to how we did in the force method. Let's see what the, the M, M prime was. 97.5 versus 97.67. It's very close. And just some kind of a rounding error there. So we have the axial load and the moment now. And that's the way to solve. Uh, using uh, MY over I approach. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It was a, a bit more complicated than previous ones. Uh, but it, if you really understand that, then I think you really understand uh, how MY over I works and what it's all about. You can now use this to solve any kind of linear elastic uh, problem that you can come up with. So in the future tutorial, we're going to just go to tutorial 4, 4.1 and just wrap up some loose ends on linear elastic and then when we get to tutorial 5 we'll be working more outside of the linear elastic range and uh, seeing how we handle that in Canadian codes. So thanks again for listening and uh, for all your comments that, that have been coming in and some emails. I really appreciate it and we'll meet back in uh, the next tutorial. All right.